እንኳን ለብራሃን ልደቱ በሰላም አደረሳችሁ ካልንበት በጣና ሀይቅ ተከባ ተራራ ላይ ከምትገኘው ከናታችን ከቅድስ ክርስቶስ ሰምራ መልካም ባል ከኔና ከ ናና ናና ይን ዛሬ አመለኮስ ኳቴን የብትኝ ይሄ ሸበላ አይዙሽ ወዩ አመለኮስ ነው እንዴ ናት የኔልሽ እንዴ ናት እኔ አሳ ገሩነታ እናታን ክርስቶስ ሰመራ አመልኮሳ የልደቱ ልጅ ጌታችን የተወለደበት የሱ ልጅ እናታን and to those of you who don't understand what i just said uh, i said um, merry christmas to all of you orthodox christians who are celebrating christmas today merry christmas all the way from uh, the mountain where it's surrounded by lake dana Uh, a monastery called our mother saint christos samra merry christmas from me and my nana who became today a nun <laughs> she's so beautiful nana <laughs> you Today is a very special service not just because there are people converting themselves to monks and nuns it's also because it is Christmas Eve the prayers start early on in the evening and it continues until the morning it's very dark here because there is no electricity in this monastery they use flashlights and candles to see and to read the bible they also use rechargeable speakers for the sounds of the prayers After 4 hours of prayers it was time to start the ceremony so they lined up the men and women who came to convert to become monks and nuns in one space while they are sitting on the floor the priest took their cob which is the little hat that they bring put it upside down inside it they put the cord that they brought to be tied in the little needle which they'll be using to sew their cob because they cannot change it for one year and they place it on top of their head this ceremony is considered as the first death and the ceremony is treated as such when jesus christ died joseph and nicodemus cleaned his body tied him with a rope covered his face with veil and covered him with white sheets as such this is done the same way when someone dies the same process goes but since these people are not really dead but spiritually dying they do this process representing that there are many reasons why people decide to do the ceremony One of them is because they had a difficult life they don't want to be in the world anymore so they come to the monastery do the ceremony and live in the monastery and the second one is 
they had such a beautiful life and uh, lots of blessing that they want to do the ceremony before they die. So they can pass this blessing to their kids, their grandkids and the future generation to come. And to know the difference between the two is the first type of people, they come to the monastery not prepared and by themselves. And the second type of people, they come very well prepared with the acceptance of their family members, their community. They have their own priests with them, one man and a woman, to help and support them through the whole process. After the ceremony is finished, they are reborn as a higher beings. And the people who accompany them becomes their spiritual parent. The prayers are done, the ceremony is finished. Now they are officially monks and nuns. And to celebrate that, they kiss each other's feet before they go into their first communion as a monk and nuns. And I became my nana Sikobanat which means I am now my Nana's spiritual mother. The process goes beforehand at home. She shaves her hair, she shaves everything, cuts her nails, uh, prepares some white clothes, a new one. And she comes here, you spend the night here, prayers all night. And they put the, the little hat thing and the cords on their head. The prayers, they put the cords in their bodies and then they pray and after that comes uh, the normal service that is uh, prayers which is Kadasi and then the communion which is Kurban and after that uh, when the service is finished I get up we leave uh, they they give them a little uh, food to eat because until then they can't talk uh, when they now that they have become a nun there were more people like her who did it and people would ki were kissing their foot because now they are higher beings. It was so cute. I was crying my heart out. It was so, it's so special. Prayers finished. And now we are going back to the quarters where we were sleeping for like an we were sitting at. After 10 hours of prayers, that started at 8 and finished at 6.30, well, 10 hours and a half. Uh, here we are. She is, is now a nun. Nun, nun, nun. Look at you, so beautiful with the sun, sunrise behind you. Oh, look. Oh, look at the sunrise. <laughs> I mean. Mm. Oh, this was our house where we slept. Let me go inside and show you what it looks like. <laughs> Wait. When we didn't really sleep, we were in here for like a, an hour or two. There, Ooh, there. So you put guas like this. So you put some plants and then you sleep on this. And some of us had a thingy like this. It's very big. Can't really see, really see it, but it's quite big. Moonun, hi. Who's to lay on? Since sauna berezost kadume na na ye. Andemat. Hmm. And the mat? Oh. <laughs> she said, but I'm a lot of people. She's going to look on that line of network. There were lots of people in there, maybe like 50. Hamsa, so I'm all up. You may be built a little. 
Y Belta, more than 50 people were in there. Yeah. One important detail that I forgot is that she can't eat. She can't eat like, uh, f for example, yesterday she was uh, allowed to eat until one o'clock in the afternoon, but after that she can't eat and she just had something uh, this morning, like a little piece of bread. So until the ceremony is finished, she's supposed to be in Ayuna, which means in, you know, in fasting mode. And so she's cleansed. After prayers is finished, uh, there is a little celebration and Babu's here. So I'm here to grab him because we have to go. And it's okay, it's a little machine. Madu no go. 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 Madu no